Hello, and thank, thank God for boost gain on the Canon 5D Mark II because it's night and this is being powered off a head torch and apparently you can see me and hopefully hear me um, don't quote me on that um, so yeah let me just uh, I'm gonna try and do one of these every day um, I'm obviously taking other footage but that's not likely to be quite so interesting well not that these are interesting anyway um, so today uh, well last night kind of was a bit chilly and I started to notice a lot of condensation on the inside of my tent uh, which was not ideal um, so when I got up in the morning it made a lot more sense when I saw that there was frost everywhere like serious fuck off frost if that is a real term um, and that I probably could have had the door open or something but it shouldn't be that surprising the amount of uh, condensation that there was so um, I walked down <coughs> and then I had a bit of disaster actually um, so my I have a meth stove a uh, uh, Tranja stove that I was extolling the virtues to to Greg saying you know it's the most robust stove ever survives wind, <coughs> rain, hail, snow thunderstorms and acts of God um, so yeah, anyway, I couldn't get it to light. Um, basically, I brought a, st uh, a kind of flint steel spark lighter thing with me. And <coughs> I think in cold weather, so I, I made some food with it the night before, but I think in cold weather, once you kind of take the meths down to a uh, <coughs> kind of two degrees kind of temperature, a bit like if you try to set fire to other kinds of alcohol, um, it's um, not very easy. You need kind of more of a uh, initial push to get it started. Um, so <coughs> I couldn't get it lit with this spark lighter, which usually works fine. Um, so I was a bit colloquially screwed. But you know, there's a. I knew there was a hut like at the head of this valley. Well, like the kind of uh, ten kilometres away. Um, we got. <coughs> which I was going to walk past anyway. Um, so, head off in that direction and we'll pick up that story later. Um, so as I was walking down the path, um, I bumped into this blown hiker. It turned out she was um, this French lady um, who was hiking with a few other people who uh, were kind of... <coughs> she said we're some distance behind her. Um, so, but we, we chatted for a bit and um, that was cool. Uh, they'd been hiking from Nicolata and gone past Kevin the Kaiser and uh, we're finishing at Abisko. So a little bit different to specifically what <coughs> I'm doing. <coughs> um, yep, so, um, then I kept walking and I bumped into the rest of their group, um, which was interesting as well, but not that interesting, um, I don't know. So when I got to, yeah, they said um, that they'd used their tent um, last night. They'd usually been staying in huts, but they'd used their tent last night because there were only two beds available. I couldn't quite work out why there would only be two beds available if it was some massive hut, because um, it's marked on the map as being, you know, quite significant. Um, anyway, I, g <coughs> I, I arrived at the hut and it was, I was where I was hoping to buy like a cigarette lighter or something where it was closed um, so I waited there for a bit um, you know, tried my spark lighter a few more times and really kind of was certain that I needed to uh, purchase a lighter or something because otherwise I'd be screwed um, you know I've been actually considering um, dumping you know um, like Rob Hudson and people were saying don't take food with you. Don't take a stove with you. Uh, just go, just eat in the huts. You'll be happier. Uh, and you know, it's best like that. Um, so anyway, I kind of hung around this hut for a while, um, and I'd been considering dumping my food. You know, if I could just get meals at the huts, considering how heavy my bag was. Well, you remember me whinging about how heavy my bag is? Oh my god. Um, any. <coughs> 
Anyway, so um, after a while I realised that actually the hut was unmanned and there was like a two bed area where people could like stay, um, like where the emergency telephone area was. Um, and shockingly, shockingly, I stole half a box of matches. Like, I left them with the draw bit and half of the kind of swipey bit and half of the matches and I took half a swiper thing and eight matches. Um, so now I can light my stove, which is amazing. Uh, but I feel, you know, very guilty and uh, indebted to the STF. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully it won't make a massive difference because hopefully there aren't that many other people in the area. Because apparently I was the only person that these, the French ladies had seen for, an, an American guy had seen pretty much since he left Kevin Kaiser. Um, so it's a very, very, very lonely landscape at the moment. Um, though personally I don't give a shit. Um, it's cool. Um, so I've walked on a little bit and parked up. Um, I would show you my tent but it appears to be quite dark at the moment and getting a good shot on this requires like precision with a head torch hung from a tree um, which is quite interesting. Um, apparently, according to the French people, um, they had seen the Aurora Borealis, i.e. the Northern Lights, um, a few times last night. Um, now last night I was really asleep, slept for 15 hours, um, but hopefully this tonight I'm going to hang about till it's a bit dark, uh, like it is now but possibly a bit darker and see if I can see anything. Don't know whether I'll be able to get any photos, but I'll try. Um, so yeah, <coughs> as you can hear, I've got a bit of a uh, cold um, right now in the form of a cough, but um, generally other coldy symptoms. Uh, so that sucks a bit. Uh, but I'm sure I'm throwing it off faster than ever before. Um, so yeah, anyway, considering that this hut's unmanned, this, the hut that I visited was unmanned, um, I'm quite glad that I've not dumped my food, or didn't dump my food initially and not even bring it, because otherwise I would be, like, starving right now, and that's not good. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, now I'm kind of like, hmm, must make sure that I have enough food for everything that I'm going to do and I think I do but this is when I actually have to put it to the test so that will be interesting because if this kind of quite big marked on the map as quite a big hostel place isn't manned then the chances are that most other places aren't manned even though there are lots of shelters and things they just won't be manned um, so that will be interesting um, yeah Anyway, tomorrow I'm going to walk along this valley for a little bit, uh, well for a long time, in fact the whole day. Um, the place I'm, tr well one of the places I'm trying to get to down this valley is about <coughs> 20 kilometres away, but um, given how heavy my rucksack is and how, well I guess I can make about 3 kilometres per hour, but I can't, including brakes, um, but I can't manage that for that many hours, so I'll need to just see how it goes. Um, it's not a big deal anyway, I'm just going to take it as slowly or quickly as I need to. Um, so we'll see how that goes. It really, oh, everybody's mentioned it everywhere, wherever they go. Um, but we're really spoiled in the UK with our OS maps, our 1 to 25,000 or even 1 to 50,000. For fuck's sake, 1 to 100,000 is just a bit annoying when you're every grid square. <coughs> Relatively small grid square is two kilometres, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Just please, can I have my OS maps? Please, please. Uh. Anyway, there's no mobile phones. Phone, 
no mobile phone signal here because I was briefly considering asking for language advice on what words like <coughs> stuff means. There are various different words marked next to mountain huts on the, the map I've got and although I can vaguely guess what they mean as in possibly things like storm shelter and stuff I'm not really sure and it'd be quite nice to know for certain but I guess I'll just have to guess or hope I meet a Swede or just not worry and just whatever. Anyway, I'll speak to you later. Bye!